It'll be the two of you having to figure this out. Together. If we start from a place of reasonable and they start from a place of crazy, when we settle, we'll be somewhere between reasonable and crazy. So uh, welcome to a, uh, an open uh, and uh, transparent marriage counselling session. I'm going to play the role of relationship counsellor, which I think is a first. Uh, for me. I am uh, lucky to be joined uh, by Jenny giving the agency perspective from the Seven Stars uh, uh, and Lisa from Vodafone giving the sort of Isbar client perspective. So uh, Ray Liotta brilliantly talking about the spectrum of reasonable and crazy. So where are we on that spectrum in terms of the relationship between advertiser and agency? Lisa. Well, I'd like to think that we are in a good place with room for improvement. I think, I think if the relationship was broken, I think I would find my job very tough and probably not very enjoyable. Um, and ultimately, I guess it depends. You know, clients differ, agencies differ, individuals differ, and therefore relationships um, are, I guess, on a spectrum. But I like to think that um, we are in a good place, but, you know, there are things that could be better. Okay, so in my experience, having done both sides, re the relationship has always been talked about. Mm. Is there anything different now in what's going on in the relationship? Because there's a lot of pl platform talk about a breakdown in trust. What's your experience of that? Um, certainly from a, um, I think from a relationship perspective, I agree with Lisa and we see you know, lots of great relationships between agencies and clients and, and all of that. Um, I do think, though, that we, 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 you know, if fundamentally we want to get to a place of trust, um, then we do need to look still at the whole commercial model behind it. And, you know, I've been involved in a lot of the work that the Sustainable Working um, Group have been working on, uh, IPA and ISPAR combined getting together, and that's all absolutely applaudable, and I'm a big fan of the ISPAR contract. Yeah. Um, but fundamentally, I think we need to get to a, a, a place of, of kind of true transparent transparency that then moves into you know giving neutral advice to advertisers. Okay, so media services framework feels a bit like a prenup. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to ask the audience actually. If I was, so hands up, do you use the media is bars media services framework agency or advertiser side? Hands up, who uses? Okay, not not that many hands at the moment. So we're just coming up to working on developing and how do we shape version three. So what's, what's, what's working with the media services framework? What do you think, what, what's good about it? What can we? I, I think that um, when obviously advertisers start that process of appointing a new media agency, invariably they need help. You yeah. know, media is a very complex um, area, the way it's traded, the way agencies, um, commercial models vary, it's complex and I think advertisers have struggled to do that alone and obviously bigger clients like myself have the luxury of working with an intermediary so you know we've appoint always appointed a consultant to help us with that. Some advertisers d don't feel they need that or maybe can't afford it or don't feel like their media account is big enough to warrant it and I think for those clients having a framework is really important because it helps them have the right conversations with agencies. Yeah. So there's some interesting stats, which I'm just going to quote uh, from Isbar's own research. So 71% of advertisers say agencies uh, start the process very positive about the framework. But later in the process, 82%, so a higher stat, uh, of clients are saying their agencies are pushing back across multiple areas. What's going on in that process, Jenny? What's the, what's the, you know, it starts off incredibly positive and then it seems to turn. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, quite honestly, that hasn't really been my personal experience of, of using the framework. Um, and we found it relative, uh, actually one of the benefits of the framework, one of the things I like about it is it tends to get through clients' legal teams more quickly. Okay. Um, so it tends to be a relatively easy 
um, you know, easily resolved, um, uh, you know, contract to get to get through. So, um, yeah, that, that hasn't the, the, that hasn't specifically been been my experience. I think sometimes you know some contracts take longer to um, to to um, get signed than than others. Um, you know, we've recently had a a really great experience where we had a client, you know, the ISBAR contract signed within six weeks of, of the pitch. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's kind of best practice, I think, because I think, you know, transition is more complex than it's ever been for, for, um, for agencies and for clients. And I think, um, you know, having that, having it, having it signed before you actually start to buy media on behalf of clients, I think is, is, is yeah. important. How do we, so, you know, a bit like a prenup, it sort of starts the relationship in, in some ways, you could argue from a position not of trust, when you're starting to sort of set out the the the, the sort of the, you know, how that relationship needs to be governed, and I think the fact that it can sometimes talking to a few agencies and advertisers, it can sometimes drag on a lot. Is that is that is that difficult? Does that then make the relationship quite difficult? So. Is there a benefit to getting that time down if we do use the frameworks? I think there's absolutely always going to be a benefit for um, in, in bringing that time down because that absorbs a lot of time and energy. Um, in, in many cases, those on the ground working with the agency are not necessarily the people negotiating the contract. Um, and that's helpful yeah. um, because, for example, in uh, in my world where where I'm dealing um, within a multi-territory contract, and, and 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 you know that that creates a lot of complexity in terms of um, appointment of an agency, um, we need to protect the working relationships of those who will be working every day day with with agencies whilst building the right. I guess transparency and the right commercial model as a advertiser and a larger organization. Yeah. I think I think maybe as media uh, media agencies I think I think we've overcomplicated this whole thing because if you get back to the fundamentals advertisers appoint media agencies to give them neutral advice and recommendations they pay us and then we go and purchase media on their behalf and if you if you stick to those principles it, it, we shouldn't have all of this complexity and we shouldn't have need for all of these you know clauses and things like that and I just think it's over complicated you know there's no creative agencies up here talking about complexity about getting a contract through yeah. because they've got a relatively simple business model and they you know going back to what we just learned from Tesco is they put the customer at the heart they, they say we are here to serve our clients yeah, yeah. and I think that's where we've got to get back to that principle I think. Do we understand where the issues are? So I think it was talked about earlier what do we mean what, what do we mean by transparency because are, are people are lots of people talking about different types of transparency do you so from a client perspective yes. what's the most important element do you think to understand when you talk about transparency? I think obviously what, what we're trying to build is trust and I think the reason why trust and tra transparency are so interdependent is because if you believe there isn't transparency, then you no longer have trust. And I think agencies and clients will differ, and especially clients will differ in terms of how much transparency they, they want, how much they feel they need, and perhaps there's sometimes a history which makes an advertiser cautious um, going into a relationship and therefore feeling they need to unpick the whole supply chain, the whole model, in order to feel confident that their advertising budget is being used in the best possible way. Yeah. So, and what's what? What does is there is is there nervousness from agency perspectives about transparency? There's a lot that's talked about that there is. Is there? Um, look, I don't. I, I don't understand why there should be. I really don't understand why there should be. And I, you know. Um, I, I think every, you know. I think advertisers just deserve that relationship with the with the media agency. Otherwise, what are they paying us for? Yeah. I just think it's fundamental. Yeah. So, what happens with, with the relationship when I don't know? Is this like having an affair or something? When you in house part of uh, <laughs> part of the I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to think of it. But if, when you in house, yes. what's what's the impact on a relationship between agency well, and advertising? Well, it's then? kind of it's, it's interesting because obviously we've been on a, I've been on a journey with Vodafone because we have over the last year in house uh, digital media, um, and interestingly enough, I think it makes your interdependency with your agency um, bigger than ever. 
because um, what, as an advertiser, you must never do is take media channels and then silo them, you know, and operate them separately within your business. You become interdependent because in order to, you know, if you're planning for business outcomes, you need to plan holistically and, and therefore across all media. And even if within certain channels they might be bought in-house, the planning function has to be done completely um, with the agency. And so actually sometimes, for example, our in-house team are working in service of the agency rather than the service of ourselves, the client, because they have to be working alongside each other and they co-locate and actually now I think we have a stronger relationship as a result. Because of that. Yeah. Do you have different ways of working with different clients, different models now with the relationship? Yeah, I mean, I think... I don't think any two clients are the same in terms of the services that they buy from media agencies. I think you know everyone has an element of work that they do in house, what that they do with you know with separate agencies. You know, so I think, um, and again, that's one of the benefits of having the framework right because you can you actually sit down and you actually talk properly about what is the scope of work, what what are you wanting us to do, and, and what do you not need us to do, yeah. um, and then you just kind of define that. And I think having that area clearly defined, I think that. I think that also helps with the interagency relationship. So when a client has an interagency team working on their business, I think if everyone knows where they start and stop in terms of their remit, I think that makes for just healthier cross-agency uh, relationships. Okay. So long-term commitments, are we really making it? So I, you know, again, when I, we had our, rela our agency relationships, and I was advertiser side for 20 years. Mm -hmm. That feels quite rare these days. There's a lot of pitches. Yeah. There's a lot of churn. How, 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 how's that contributing to the relationship, do you think? Honestly, it's not ideal. It's not I ideal for, um, I guess, the guys on the ground managing media, both agency and client side. Mm. I think it's, it's a trap we've all, in, all fallen into as an industry. It's, it's, you know, it's a huge temptation for advertisers because it's yeah. an opportunity to renegotiate. Um, and it makes life difficult, I think, both for agencies in terms of building trust and for advertisers building those relationships. Yeah. I think we are where we are in, in a world which has become very competitive from an agency point of view as well. I don't know how we get out of that, but, but anything um, that we can do to build better contracts, better frameworks and better working practices, the less I think there'll be a need and a desire to keep kind of re-evaluating um, the agency. Because it feels, and there's a lot of, again, debate on, you know, IPA effectiveness platforms about the focus on the short term. Is there an inevitability in that because everybody's pitching and because of that churn? Is it hard to build longer term strategies that deliver back on the effectiveness side? when you've got that as a backdrop, is that a challenge? I think part of the challenge that's driving that actually is, and again, um, is, you know, it's, it's fundamental, it's around the metrics that you agree at the, at the onset and the metrics that we then agree with the media owners. So um, I think if, you know, we are, you know, we, we live in a world where we talk about value pots and we talk about um, undisclosed models and we talk about all of that kind of thing and effect and click the value of the click which is just a crazy currency to be talking about and I think when you live in that world and and you're you're guaranteeing media on that basis you're you're kind of commoditizing the audience and I think that's leading to a lot of a unhealthy lack of you know loss of brand building um, but it's also leading to a lot of the you know the, the what's been talked about earlier in terms of you know, what, what, what media is communicating now. It's leading to media owner behaviours yeah. um, that's driving clickbait and all that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. behaviour that we really, as consumers, we hate, yeah. as brand builders, we hate, mm -hmm. and yet we're agreeing to a set of metrics that's, that's driving that behaviour. Yeah. So, conscious of time, and I'm just going to ask from an advertiser perspective and an agency perspective, if there's one thing you would ask for now from your agencies that you don't feel you're getting to the level you'd like, what would it be? And if there's one thing as part of a negotiation you're willing to give up, what would it be? Do you sort of, what's your ask and what's your give? I think the ask would be transparency in terms of the trading, um, the, 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 the trading process and the trading environment. So by that I mean, the more we have an honest conversation about how our media money is being spent, the more we can kind of help the agency work through 
solutions. Um, especially when you're working partly in-house and partly with agencies, that you need to understand exactly, you know, what are we buying, what are you buying, how are you buying, how can we help you as an advertiser, because we also have influence with media owners. It's, not, it's no longer the case that those conversations are only having it, being happening in the advertiser side. I think the more transparency we can have, the healthier the conversations. You know, we, we, we make money, we know agencies need to make money, um, so honesty, I think, gets to us to better collective outcomes. Yeah. Um, what we need to give up, I think, is probably um, probably some of the pressure that we're putting in the wrong places. So, so, so pressure in terms of income or origin from, agent, from an agency point of view comes from a misunderstanding of how the agency model works. So I think the more we have more honesty, the more advertisers can help in terms of building the right business model, both for the agency and, and ourselves as advertisers. Because advertisers quite often say they want agencies to make money, and then you have procurement teams who look when you should be fully transparent, and I am going to put it out there and yeah. say it, because I have spoken to people who yeah. say this happens. This concept of double dipping. <laughs> yes. So it's, you know, and I'm, it sort of comes up, which is yes. we want our share of the value pot and rebates that you make, and we want the best possible price. now. That creates some challenge for agencies having worked yes. in one. Yes. <laughs> you know, what's what, what's your perspective on how we tackle that? How we you know we can be transparent, and uh, the fear may be that everything gets eroded. Um, and how, how you know how, how can agencies make money? I guess is the um, that might be a better question. <laughs> Jenny, 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 nicely, nicely <laughs> handed over. <laughs> <laughs> to finish, Actually, Jenny, <laughs> so how do agencies make how do how do agencies make money in a more honest, open, transparent way? There's got to be a way that we can do that that works. How you, do we do it? So, I can only talk from our example, and we are a UK only business, so we we're not talking about the global yep. contracts here. But I can absolutely hand on heart say we have never ever made any a penny non-transparently, and we've been profitable. So. Um, there are smart advertisers there that are prepared to pay and to make sure that, you know, no, nobody wants transparency in order for media agencies to be poorer because that's a bit like, you know, I need to employ somebody, I'll buy the cheapest person on the market, you employ the best person and, and you negotiate around the salary, right? So I think the reason people want transparency, advertisers want transparency, is because they want to trust the advice they get from their clients. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we can't live in this kind of half-baked economy where some people are transparent with some clients and, and that. you can't have it you can't have a halfway house yeah you know you can't be half pregnant and, yeah. and I think that's the key thing it's you know we, it's it, it's about trust yeah great point to finish and I've just seen the time sign so we're out of time as well thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you.